one. And what was the other one? If this one was built before that one. This oh, one, the old one. The old one. tunnel, yeah. yeah. We don't know anybody who tends to call them Queensway and Kingsway. So obviously the other one's Wallacey and the new tunnel. So they started the drills here and the same on the Birkenhead side and then they set off underneath the river. It's uh, 44 foot in diameter and so the tunnel looks like this. <coughs> when we get down to road deck level we'll take you out for a little look at the traffic. It was built as a double decker tunnel and we'll explain a little bit why um, when we get to the control room. But basically what uh, this building does it extracts foul air out of the roof of the tunnel, there's holes in the roof of the tunnel and then it pushes fresh air down into these air inverts to ventilate the tunnel. So what we're going to do today, we're going to take you up to the old control room and tell you about the functions that they had in that room. Um, they only moved out six years ago, but uh, you'll see it, it looks quite uh, a lot older than that. Uh, we'll come back down through the building, we'll go through our boiler house and into a fresh air chamber. So you get to see one of the fans in action. We'll then go out to the side of our <coughs> tunnel, uh, on the side plaza underneath by the Cunard building, which we call our bridge room, and you'll get to see George's dock, which we sit in. And then it's a short 120 stairs down to go and look at the drivers in the tunnel. Go and scare the drivers for a little while. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Yeah. Do you have any burning questions at this point? We're conscious we've got to kind of try and keep these moving. Um, so anyhow, do you have any sort of questions about how it was built? <laughs> to show you a bit of the architecture, the inside of the building. You're on location here. Uh, the last series of Foils War was filmed in this area. I didn't have to set dress it too much um, because it's got a lot of its original features. You'll see some like the little name above the door there, the control room. So this area here uh, is where our living caretaker used to live. He had his luxury apartment here, the letterbox. Um, but the last caretaker in the building actually died on this floor of a heart attack. Steps. From the steps. No, he had access to the lift, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do have a little ghost that goes to the old caretaker. like a museum you can't touch. We think everything's off. We think. just quickly walk around the room and tell you a few things about this room. So this panel behind you is the main electrical distribution panel for the fans you're going to see. Um, 
some people, the old locals, you might recognise some of the names. George's Dock, that's the ventilation station in there. Another one on North John Street, opposite Six by Nico. Uh, Woodside, from the other side of the water, Sydney Street. And two branch exits, one in Liverpool, one in, in Birkenhead. The Birkenhead one is now closed. I closed in 1965. So what are we generating from our cars when we're going through the tunnel? Fumes? Okay. Yeah, carbon monoxide. You know, the engineer's job is to get rid of those fumes. So it's detected in the tunnel. If it was detected, the engineers would come across and say, let's get some fresh air fans on, let's get some exhaust fans on. You can see those. It would light up like black hood on inhalation as they loved it. It was a, just like, they just loved it. And what they're on now in the new control room is a mouse and a screen. So you can imagine they didn't want to leave this room, but they ended up having to leave this room. Um, we'll come to this end here. Uh, I should tell you how this tunnel was constructed. It was constructed through sandstone. A lot of people think the tunnel sits on the riverbed. It wasn't. It was constructed through sandstone under the riverbed. What they did, they cut away the sandstone, put cast iron segments in its place. Before they bolted the cast iron segments together, they put the molded lead in the joints. And they bolted it together, and then they backed it with concrete on the outer face and slurry on the inside. Just to give you an idea what sort of water can get into the tunnel, and the, it's not, as I say, groundwater, not river water, about 200 gallons a minute. And when we get to real level a little bit later on, you might hear them think the pump kick in, although it's been quite dry, isn't it? Yeah, so sometimes we kick in. This area here is our electrical system and our communication system. This tunnel is fed from both sides of the river, so the power is fed from Liverpool and from Birkenhead. So if you imagine these are the lights running through the tunnel, where we you'll know if you've been through this tunnel, there's an accident in there, it takes no time for the city to back up. Um, perhaps I shouldn't tell you this, but you've seen it in our right gang. There's no speed cameras in the tunnel. Okay. But <laughs> okay. what is the speed limit? Uh, Wrong. Oh, okay. 30 <laughs> miles an hour in this tunnel. Oh, Kingsway, two separate tubes, 40 miles an hour. But beware also, the police cars do have a fast car in their vehicle, so they can track it from point to point. And they're also watching you on camera. Mm -hmm. So stay to 30 if you can. Um, <coughs> this area here, this, we're doing a tour of the Queensway. Uh, this area here is the, the King, was a system for the you remember the King's Cross rail disaster? Uh, a lot of people were killed in that, and there was a major killer in that is smoke. So what they did, they put this system in, which is, if you've been through the King's where you've got jet fans in the ceiling, and they've just got two big fans at either end. It's a straight tunnel, big fan at one end, big fan at the other. So what that does, it picks up the smoke on Kingsway and pushes it to either fan. And this is like a computerized system, so, if there was a fire here, they'd press that button, it would decide which way to smoke it once it get lifted and push it through. At the same time, they'd be in contact with the fire brigade, so it's a clear passage through. <coughs> tram. What's a tram going in an engineer's control room? Nice model though, isn't it? That's quite a uh, When the tunnel was getting built, it was going to be the longest underwater road tunnel in the world, and it held that title for 14 years. But not only was it going to be the longest underwater tunnel in the road, in the world, under the middle two lanes, they're going to run trams. And what happens when they put the plan application in? There was an objection from the ferries and the railways. They said, we can understand you building the longest underwater road tunnel in the world, but if you put trams under there, you'll kill our businesses. So they objected and it was upheld. So the engineer said, we're not going to change our design. We'll just leave it and hopefully in the future we can do something with it. And that's what they did. As soon as he said we weren't going to run the trams, they got to go ahead. Ceiling, 
to the floor tiles. The original heating system for the, the building has actually come back a hydrocore system, warm air um, generated in boilers underneath the flooring, which was sent up through the walls. Obviously, we've got a bit more modern system now. Um, the other thing that's quite antiquated for those of you who went to the toilets, um, the flushing system in the building is a bit like you'd get on a ferry. It's like a suction that pulls it down to the basement of the building. Um, so we have our macerator cabinet there. We won't go into detail. But that's where it goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is to get the fresh air into the tunnel. So how do we do that? Hold on to your hat, have a look up. Can we see some daylight? Yeah. Think about our building. Great big tall chimney. About three quarters of the way down, it's got shoulders. That's one of the shoulders. There's another shoulder in the upper corner. So what happens when we get this fan put on for you in a minute? It's going to drag fresh air down from high level. It's going to come past us, go into the fan, and then send down a shaft about 120 feet deep that goes into the airways. Remember that dragon we showed you with the airways? It goes into those airways. Once it's in those airways, this little hole is drilled up onto the road, fresh air comes up, ventilates the tunnel, and then goes out through the flat section of the roof with its holes again, out through to the exhaust fan, straight up the chimney. That makes sense to everybody? It's positive pressure, fresh air in, foul air out. That's a swimming stroke, just in case we do leave. Okay, fresh air in, foul air out. Okay. Um, when the tunnel was getting built, there was a report from America, Pittsburgh in America. Um, there was a tunnel got there called the Liberty Tunnel. It's half a mile long. And what had happened, there was a rail strike, just like we've got. A rail strike, everybody jumped in their cars to go to work. The tunnel was chock-a-block, queuing either side. What did I say before? Fumes. There was people inside that tunnel falling asleep through carbon monoxide poisoning people running out the tunnel gasping for their lives. And that report came across from America to the guys building the tunnel. They said, wow, that tunnel is only half a mile long. We're building a tunnel 2.13 miles long. We're going to need some serious ventilation. But of course, they didn't know a lot about the combustible engine, they didn't know a lot about carbon monoxide, so they didn't know what to give us. So what they did, they over-engineered everything. So these fans, as Alison said, 20 feet in diameter. 
25 tons in weight with a top speed of about 68 to 70 revs per minute. They're not built for speed, they're built for pulling power in this case, and the exhaust are built for sucking power. Um, not only did they give us huge fans over engineer them, they've given us two as well. So as you saw around the corner there, there's, there's the one I'm going to get on for you. And the same with the fans upstairs, the exhaust fans. We've got five working ventilation stations, each with that number of fans in. So a lot of capacity to push fresh air into the tunnel and suck the foul air out. One fan can push or pull, depending on which fan it is, half a million cubic feet of air in one minute. Just to give you an idea what that is, think of about six or seven Olympic sized room pools. It's that amount of air that one fan can pull in a minute. So they are very powerful. And as I said before, it's going to cost six million to build this tunnel. But when they added the ventilation, it went up to eight million pounds. So you can imagine the bosses going mad at that time.
Mr. Yoss, anything? Yeah. Okay. So where we are, ladies and gents, where, what we call our bridge room, why do we call it a bridge room? Because we're under a bridge, uh, that's what we call it. So where we are now, we're under Brunswick Street. So you know, um, between the Port of Liverpool building and the Cunard the Street, that's called yeah. Brunswick Street, the other one between the other two buildings is Water Street. And there they are here on the story. So that's Brunswick Street and that's Water Street. So we're actually just come from our building here. And we just come under this very first arch, just there. Okay, that's that first arch. Of 17 arches going that way to the river. So the picture is the wrong way around, really. It needs to be on a wall there. Okay, so the river's that way, the big six lane road, the strand is that way, just to get your bearings. So why are the bridges there? Well, what happened? Um, George's dock, this, it was a huge dock. Dock, it was right along here under the overhead railway, round the Liber buildings, back down to Man Island, and back round. And that was put in in 1771, this dock. And what happened? Liverpool was very busy port, it got busier and busier, the ships were getting bigger and bigger, and eventually it was too big for this dock. So what they did, they closed the dock and built the docks north and south of here. But there was a problem in that. The only way across the river in those days, in 1771, was by Mersey ferries across there. So in those days, it wasn't like Mersey ferries is today, where it's Jerry Marsden on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. <laughs> they were a much more robust ferry, and they were carrying all sorts of goods to do their sails in the pool. And in those days, there was things to talk about cattle coming on and on and off as well. So what they had to do when they got off the boat, they had to walk right round this dock because this was closed down. So what they said, we'll build two bridges across just to make it easier for people to get across with their goods. <coughs> and I'd say that's Brunswick Street and that's Water Street. Um, and they built these bridges, and that actually made three spaces for the three. Graces, don't be shy now, you can tell me. Uh, and so this picture was taken uh, on the completion of the Port of Liverpool building. Uh, and it was taken from the vantage point of St Nick's Church, which is over that way somewhere. And this is on that drawing. Um, and that was completed uh, on, on, on completion in 1907. Well, some real technical explanations there. Well, you can obviously display a tractor now yeah, from Tony. A, a nut and piece of rope. Okay. Uh, and what she's going to do is throw it through that culvert. It's high tide, there'll be a big splash. It's a low tide, there'll be a cold and splash. Okay. okay. Just to prove the water is coming through. Ready? Listening? Oh, that's it's quite a deep that. splash today. Uh, it is salt water. We've got about 30 foot of rope here, so I'll just pull it back up. And then, <laughs> they'll caught something. wall of George's Dock, 1771, and when we dug it out we found that timber, and that's where the boats used to tie up in 1771. So it's an awful long way from where the dock wall is now, um, and just behind you, just to get your bearings, is the big six bearings. Right, um, so you feel like you've come down a really long way 
So that's actually the shaft that they dug underneath George's dock building. So that's the depth that the men had to dig down with a pickaxe, small explosive. So ladies, it was all men back then. Um, ladies did have a role in the tunnel. They did the engineer, uh, the electrical cables, uh, did all the sewing jobs, basically. Um, wouldn't have looked like that back in the, the 1920s. Would have just been rough rock, ladders, bits of rope. To come down here and start the daily dig on the tunnel itself. This is called the access tube because it's where the workers access the main tube. So you're down at road deck level, we'll take you out shortly to, to see the traffic. So Phil's uh, told you a little bit about how it was built, you know, the, the method of construction. So they, they came down a shaft this side and the same the other side, Birkenhead head side. But actually when they met in the middle, because they actually went from each side to meet in the middle, they were less than an inch out. So it was really, really accurate work. No GPS in those days, of course. I was going to say, how did they manage to actually meet in the middle? Yeah. Because the gadgets they had. And, uh, and also it's been yeah. you know. Well, yeah. yeah, but you would have thought different, you know, underground or the Just the other lights, or the yeah. levels and the, the other The way. other lights, um, measuring sticks, that kind of thing. Um, they knew a bit about the geology because the uh, railway tunnel is actually older. Uh, Mersey Rail is 1886. So they knew about, it was the first underwater rail tunnel in the world. A lot of firsts in Liverpool. So they did know a little bit about the, the geology and they did a lot of aerial photographs as well. But we just think, well, when they, you know, as they got close in the middle, they just shouted a bit, go <laughs> left, right. But we've always said if they missed, then we'd have two tunnels straight away. Could have saved us a bit of money down the line, you know. But they were very, very good. Um, as Phil was saying, it's a very bendy tunnel. And anybody know why it bends? Has anybody heard the story of why it bends? Do you know? I think so. Go on then. Avoid some of the like, this hand hall or some of the buildings. That's it, yeah. I mean, the most people think it's to do with the geology or to slow horses down and that kind of thing. We never had horses in this tunnel in the end. Um, the two mares on either side of the river um, knew that nothing had been attempted on this scale anywhere in the world and they were not that confident in the engineering. So they said, don't go under the municipal buildings. So as you come in at the Liverpool end, it avoids the municipal building at the top of Dow Street, the Town Hall by Castle Street, it goes down past the India buildings, uh, underneath Brunswick Street, and then um, the other side it avoids Hamilton Square Station and the Birkenhead Town Hall. So even more amazing that they actually met up. When they completed the Under River section uh, in 19, about 1928, <coughs> and they completed that, they hadn't done the exits at that point. They were still arguing over where the exits should come out. Um, there were different ideas for where they wanted the, you know, the exits to come out. Certainly on the Birkenhead side, they thought it would come out of Woodside, because there was a big train depot there as well as the ferries. Um, so all the councillors were up, were wrangling. So I think it was not until about 1929 they finalised where they were going to put these exits. So that's the other reason it kind of bends towards the end. Uh, it, it was to do with land that they could acquire as well. So this area here is our old emergency exit, as Phil has said. Go that way. Go down the steps, 